Hi, I'm Christy Tomlinson, mixed media artist, and this is Art Redefined, where there's no rules, just creative, messy play. Today, I have guest Jean Oliver on, and she's gonna be teaching us how to create a vintage canvas on a door plate. And when we come back, she's gonna to talk to us all about vintage finds and how to incorporate it in your art. All right, we are back. Um, and welcome guest, Jean Oliver. I'm so excited to have you. Glad she is an awesome, sweet girl. Um, Jean is a mixed media artist, but she is also, um, she creates fabric, bags, um, clothing, jewelry. You have a website and she does um, a fall launch and a spring launch every year. Amazing, amazing stuff. I own a lot of her pieces. Um, I also love that she does vintage mixed media art, which is something totally different than what I do. I do a lot of brights and so this is completely out of um, out of my element and I am so excited to have you on today we're going to be making a project this vintage canvas on um, an old vintage door plate which is so cool I love this just the coolest project thank you so welcome it's so thank exciting you. to have you glad to be here so you want to talk us through the process of um, how we start this canvas okay I love um, when I'm out at flea markets one of my favorite things to find is vintage papers wallpaper ledgers because um, I love to incorporate it into my art. So cute. And I also love to look for hardware. So um, I'm always, my eyes are always open for anything vintage and definitely rusty old hardware. And the more yellow the paper, the better. And I so, love it. I love it. So we have a stack here of just some old papers. And for this um, piece, I really like to start with, you know, everything to be more neutral. Okay. See, and that's for me. I would totally always... Go for the bright paper. So. Well, and a lot of times I do. In a lot of my other mixed media pieces, I'll have layer upon layer of vintage papers and wallpapers. But for this particular project, I really wanted to keep it more simple um, because one of my favorite things that when I'm out in an art show, I love pen and ink and charcoal drawings. And that's kind of was my inspiration for this, to keep it, it really simple. simple. Now, I'm putting this on with... Um, um, matte medium, right? right? And this is a sealer, it's a glue, um, and you were telling me, now when, I don't want to just put the papers anywhere. You, you can um, if they're all about the same color. Um, okay. But if you have lots of different shades of whites and creams and yellows, I really like to keep the outside whiter and the middle to be where the darker, darker. colors are, are because that's where you're going to be doing the face. And that way the face shows up better, right. is that right? Okay. But if you don't want to do that, um, you can always, I'll show you later how you're going to add paint and so you can cover it up. Did I just mess that up? No, nope, there are no mess ups. No. Okay, good. Not at all. So once this is finished. Once you cover everything on the front. Is that what you would consider that just to be good? Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. And then I would also just do the sides. Okay, the finishes and the sides. Um, and then once it dries. I just take some sandpaper and I lightly just go around the whole thing to smooth out. Um, it really, you cannot mess this up. I um, love it. I love the sandpaper look because it gives it even more vintage look too. Right, I agree. So after we've put the paper on, what are some of the next steps? For me, I love to look for different images in magazines or family photos like these over here. These are just of my grandma because I love the hairstyles or I love the clothing. And They're cool, I love them. And even if, you know, even in magazines, I always get to tons of fashion magazines and I love the ads because the faces, the designs and the hairstyles are wonderful. So that's a huge source of inspiration awesome. for me. Um, okay, with I have a, a question face. for you on the paper. Um, I noticed that you have like on some of these, um, you've got like some different, I noticed on this one, like tell me what, this one obviously isn't a bunch of little pa different papers. So what would you, what, what's the reason behind using that entire piece? Sure. The thing I love about the old pieces, because I love the story that they tell. I mean, when I went to France, I brought back so many beautiful old pieces. And so every piece I've made with the vintage French papers, they tell a story for me. Oh, and goodness. when I give art, I love when it can tell a story, too, for other people, and it holds some significance. This piece, it has, it has a letter written from 1926 on it. And, you know, if it's a really special letter, I would highly recommend that you copy it first before you put it on. Um, and somebody like me would use the original and then wish later I'd made the copy. I know, I've done I that, and that's, that's why. <laughs> My brother, um, he builds guitars, and he's a musician. And so when I found this vintage um, guitar string paper that had the old guitar strings in it,
it. I knew that'd be perfect for making something for him at some point. I love it. That's awesome. And then and this is just... Um, say, it has something else on it besides paper, too. It's modeling paste, which is one of my favorite. Um, I know you really yep, enjoy modeling I paste, too. It. it adds such amazing texture. So if you want to keep it simple, that's great. But if you really want to add a little bit of color, um, there's vintage wallpaper um, that you can incorporate. And and then the modeling paste, and to really feel free to add those layers if you I want to. It. Okay, so what's the next step after we create our canvas? Would that be to sketch the face on? Right, and the next step, um, I really I really love to do faces, but if you're not into faces, you could do whatever, you know, something else. But my favorite tool on this project is to sketch with a Marksall pencil. And it comes in white and black and gray and blue and green, many different colors, but the reason I use them because it's water soluble. Water soluble. So people like me that aren't great sketchers can sketch it and erase it if we're not happy with it, right? Absolutely. And the Love beauty it. of it also is that, as you can see here, I have just lightly sketched with a Marksall mm -hmm. pencil in a gray. But after I sketched it out and I'm feeling confident about what I want it to look like, I'll go back with a black and I will... Just tie or add... I'm just going back to add a little more... Definition. detail, but what is going to be great about this is when I get the paintbrush wet, you're going to actually be creating like a watercolor. I and love you, that. And you can go back and you can do more details. But so, right now I'm going to keep it very simple so just to show you. You're just going to get a paintbrush wet and then once you put it on, it's just going to give a cool watercolor effect, right? Right. I use a very tiny brush. Awesome, and it just kind of bleeds it. That is beautiful. So does it matter what kind of brush you use? Does it have to be a liner, or can you use? You can use bigger brushes. I but just this just keeps the detail if you use a liner correct. brush. I but I do use different size brushes, and you can keep on going. But as it dries, it becomes more gray. I love it. And you can go back and add shadowing. You can go add details to the eyes. And so here's another one that you started to sketch. I love this one because it's kind of, um, to me, it reminds me of the vintage um, ephemera that you have on the canvas. I love that you've kind of kept that the same like feel with her haircut and all that kind of stuff. That's, it right. reminds and then, me of the photos. Right, and then it's actually one of the little girl pictures of my that grandma. So and cool. then I would go back in with the black marks all and really do more of the details once you're more you know, confident mm -hmm. with your sketch. And do you have some other samples to show of the faces? We have one right here. I love this. This is a good example is, I mean, if you didn't want to see the words, if you don't mm -hmm. want to see the, the, the words through, you know, through your painting, feel free to use like a fluid cream or white and just put a little bit with your finger and let Inside it dry. The face. Yeah, well, before you even sketch anything. Sketch it. As you can oh, see, okay. the, the white's off the side. There's no, you know, just so a little oval. So you put oval. your white on before you sketch anything? Yes. That is cool. That's a brilliant idea. Like this one right here. I love it. This one, you know, she's been lightly sketched. I put a little bit of cream in there, and then I can go back with a black marks all and fill in. And then that you can also awesome. go back with a white and highlight. Um, but you can also here's a here's one, she and you is can gorgeous. and you can just go back with a white, and you can highlight in different areas, and you can go back with your with your um, paintbrush and water also. And that's when that. you're going to also, with your white marks all or your white gel pen, you're going to go and add details into the eyes, like you can see on these. So just this kind of a gel pen, you would just go in Absol and yes. fill in uh, right here on the whites of her eyes. eyes and give her a little reflection that in, in her so eyes. That is so cool. And you can also go through in her hair. That's a neat little trick for, I mean, an easy little trick without having to do paint. That's really cool. Okay, so the next step to making um, our display or our book plate thing, what, what would be our next step? Well, I chose to use a, a door plate to as the stand, but you could use a lot of different things. Um, but for this project, we just have a dowel. Um, you're going to need to measure the opening of the plate. And we just cut the dowel just like about an inch and a half. And you're just going to take a really long screw. I'm going to move your water yep. out of here too. 
and you're just going to screw that all the way in into your canvas base. And the dowel looks about like this, right. correct? And you're also, you can paint the dowel, you can cover it in vintage paper like Book I did paper. on yeah. these. I love and that. And if you measure correctly, good, it fits. So <laughs> cool, I love it. And so you also have some rub-ons here. What do you use your rub-ons for? For example, um, for this one, you're all the way done. Um, it's always, I always like to add something. Sometimes I'll take the white gel pen and I'll write words. Um, or I'll take my charcoal pencil and I'll write things around it. Um, here, I just, you know, we just added some rub-ons and it just adds another bit of texture and depth to the piece. And for those people that haven't used rub-ons before, do you want to demonstrate how to use the rub-ons? Absolutely. So this one, so you can use any type of rub-on. I mean, but you can use words or you can use... So many rub-ons. They have really nice quotes and things like that. If you don't want to use a rub-on, um, I really like to just take a fine-tipped paintbrush and use black paint. So cool, I love that. Yes, or you can, and then you can also take some paint and just, just write on it. I love to finish a piece with words. And I know you're a lover of words too. I do, And I, I think it. it makes it personal. And you can do it with, um, that's another reason why you have the pens too. I've seen sometimes you write on with pens, is that right? I do. I love it, so beautiful. That's awesome. Um, so tell me a little bit about these other things because obviously these other vintage finds you have are not on your canvases, but what would you use them for? I have taken, you know, the same size of, uh, of canvases before oh, and even attached how cute is the that? doorknob. That is a really cute. Or I've taken a finished piece and we just attach, you know, a handle on it. Brilliant. That is, I love it. And it's always fun to, I mean, you just can find these really beautiful, Anything amazing um, old hardware and it's just fun to give them that life again. So cool. And so I see um, this, it looks like something dirty yes. out of my husband's. My husband did throw it away. It's, okay, he so builds tell me bikes. why you have it. <laughs> he, he builds bikes and I saw this in the garbage. I was like, no, I can use that. And so cool, well, show us how I would. This is just an old chain. And even using just old chain, you can, you know, hot glue it around the edge and just create a frame for pieces. And so I, I, hopefully I'll just help you to look at yeah. junk in a different way, how it can really add character um, to I your pieces. Love these. And, I, and the one thing that I love about it, and I have to say this too, I noticed that she signed the back of it. And I love that. I, um, I think it's important for every artist to sign the back of their work because it's always put your handprint on it, but I love the vintage feel of these. I love how simple these are. For me, this would be hard to do because it is so simple, but then I look at it and I love it and it's something that I would love to have in my house. So um, thank you so much for Thanks being for on today. Me. You are amazing, you're wonderful. And don't, for, um, don't forget to check out Jean Oliver, Jean Oliver Designs, and um, check, come back next time for Art Redefined. Mm -hmm.